The first thing to notice here is this is paired data. We have a pretest, then a post test. So we're actually not interested in these scores. We're interested in the difference of the scores. So if we subtract all the pretest scores from the post test, we can see if the students improved or not. So here's how to do this on the calculator. Start by pressing stat, then press enter on edit. In list one, we're going to type all the pretest scores. Now press over to get to list two. Here we're going to type the post test scores. Just a word of caution, be very careful about doing this next procedure. These are not two separate random samples. It's the same group of people being tested twice. So it's appropriate to do this next procedure. Since we're interested in the difference, press over and then press up so list three is highlighted. Down here is the function bar. It's where we can type in a function for list three. So since we want the pretest scores subtracted from the post-test scores, we're gonna say list two, so press second, two, minus list one, the pretest scores, second, one. When we press enter, it's gonna automatically subtract all the scores. So these are the differences, and this is what we're gonna actually construct our confidence interval with. Let's use the four-step process. So state, we wish to estimate the true mean difference in scores, which is post-test minus pre-test, for all marine biology students who complete degrees at the university. So the state step needs both our parameter of interest, which is the true mean difference in scores, and our confidence level, which I almost forgot. We want to be 99% confident in this interval. Next, the plan step. If conditions are met, we will construct a one sample T interval. That's the inference method. We also need to check conditions. Random, it's a random sample of 12 students, so that's met. Independent, the students were selected without replacement, so we must assume there is at least 120 students in the program for the 10% condition to be met. Also, it's worth noting we're checking independence for the difference in scores. We need to assume that each of the scores differences are independent of the other scores differences. There's obviously an independence violation between the pretest and post-test scores since it's the same student who took each test, but that's okay. We're just worried about the differences and independence between each of the differences. Next, the normal condition. This one's really important to check since we have such a small sample size of 12. We need to check for evidence of non-normalness like strong skewness or outliers in the score differences. So the good news is we already have all the differences listed in list three. So let's check a modified box plot for outliers. We can do this by pressing second y equals to get to the stat plot menu. Press enter on plot one, turn it on, and go over to the fourth option, the modified box plot. We want to use list three, which is the differences. So press second and three. Now when we press zoom nine, it will graph it. All right, I don't see any little points there or symbols, so there's no outliers. That's good news. Now we need to check for strong skewness. So if you press second and y equals again, you can change plot one to a histogram, which is the third option. You can leave everything else the same, but press zoom nine. All right, it might be a little skewed right, but as I've mentioned before, TI calculators tend to make things look skewed right. I always mess with the window settings to get a better perspective. So if you press window, let's change the X minimum to how about 10 and the X maximum to 70. And let's make our scale 10 instead. Now when we press graph, we have a little bit different of a perspective here. Um, let's tweak the window a little bit more. It, our window's not tall enough, so we'll turn the Y maximum up a little bit right here. Let's change this to say seven. All right, I don't see strong skewness anymore. Let's try a, a different window setting, just to be sure. Let's change the X scale to five. Okay, I still don't see strong skewness. So we checked a few different histograms. It looks okay. There's certainly not strong skewness. Let's do one final check. If you press second and Y equals one more time, press enter on plot one and choose the very last option. This is a normal probability plot. When you press zoom nine, you're going to see this. As long as these dots appear in roughly a linear form, then we have roughly normally distributed data. So all that checks out. 
There's not non-normalness here. So I think it's safe to use T procedures. Now we're ready to construct our confidence interval. All confidence intervals are a point estimate, in this case x bar, the sample mean, plus or minus a margin of error, which in this case is t star, our critical value, times our standard error, the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So we need a lot of information to construct our confidence interval. Here's how we're going to get it. We already have our differences and scores stored in list 3. So if we press the stat button, go over to calculate, and press enter on one of our stats. We're going to change the list to list 3 by pressing second and the number 3. When we go down to calculate and press enter, here's all the data we need. The first piece of data is the sample mean, and S sub X right down there is the sample standard deviation. Also, N is 12, but we know that from the stem of the problem. So let's write down the information we just got. Now we need T star, the critical value. Let's start by drawing a T distribution with 11 degrees freedom, which kind of looks like the normal distribution, but squashed a little bit, a lower peak and fatter tails. All right, if the middle 99% of the data is right here, then that means this tail area on the left-hand side is 0 0.005. Over here is also 0 0.005, so that the total adds up to 100%. The way the inverse t function works on the calculator is you have to feed it all the area to the left. So to the left of this t star critical value is the 99% area plus the 0 .005 area. So we're going to say inverse norm 0.995, those two values added, with 11 degrees freedom. Degrees freedom is just sample size minus 1. So in this case it's 12 minus 1, 11. To do this on the calculator, press 2nd, then the VARS button. This gets you to the distribution menu. Go down to inverse T, and type in the area of 0.995, and degrees freedom of 11. When we press enter, there's our T star, 3.1058 approximately. Now we could just input all these values into the formula and calculate it, but we can actually use the calculator to do it for us. If you press the stat button and go over to test, scroll down to T interval. Now for input, we can either put data or stats. If we click on stats, we can see it already has our sample mean and sample standard deviation, sample size, but the wrong confidence level. So we could just change this to 0.99, Scroll down to calculate, and press enter. Here's our confidence interval. Now the reason all the data was already in there is because we ran one of our stats on list three recently. Here's the other way to do it. On the T interval menu, click data, and our differences of scores are stored in list three. So if we go list three by pressing second and then three, and keep our confidence level at 99%, it ends up giving us the same interval. So our interval is 24.24 to 47.093. Now we're ready to conclude. We are 99% confident that the true difference in scores post-test minus pre-test is contained in the interval 24.24 to 47.093. Now notice the entire interval is positive, and that zero is not contained in the interval. That means we have strong evidence that the true difference in scores is positive. In other words, that the post-test scores are higher than the pre-test scores. So we can say, since zero is not within our interval of 24.24 to 47.093, there is statistically convincing evidence of an increase in student knowledge associated with the university's marine biology curriculum. I hope you liked the video, and if you want to learn more about confidence intervals, check out my confidence interval playlist. It starts with the basic concepts and builds all the way up to videos like this. There's also a video at the end that shows you which type of confidence interval to use for each circumstance.